Welcome Brokes, this video is part of a series of videos that will help you understand some musical concepts and to use that knowledge in other videos about analysis of famous pieces of classical music. They are aimed at people who are not musicians but want to learn about classical music in a clear way so they can enjoy it even more than they already did, or who knows, maybe getting someone to like it. I'll concentrate more in the 18th and 19th centuries, or to give you some names, from Johann Sebastian Bach to Claude Debussy, approximately, since many people who know the music of these periods, or at least can recognize something if they hear it. The subject of this video is... Form. So let's get into it. Classical music has its own language, but be careful when saying that music is an universal language. Personally, I don't think it is, otherwise the concert halls will be crowded with people attending the event. It would be like saying that any sentence written in this alphabet is perfectly understandable by everyone. And as you know, it's not the case. Lots of spoken languages use these same signs, but the way of arranging the letters to create words and the pronunciation of them is different from one language to another. That's why this music needs to be studied in order to understand what the composer is saying with his work. I need to be a broken record about this, but I notice music, classical music, has much to do with the other arts, especially the written one, literature. When talking about art, it is not only the pictorial definition, but the set of expressions that we know as music, dance, architecture, cinema, well, you get the idea. All those have something in common, which is form. This little word gave me much trouble the first time I studied it, but don't worry, I will give you the clear vision of it and I will save you from the headache I had back then. But before that, here's a question for you. Ready? Can you tell me the definition of form? What is form? Do you know it? Have you ever thought about it? Yes? No? Maybe you have a vague idea of what form is. You just don't know how to put it in words. Or maybe you have heard about musical form? That's how you can recognize a waltz from a march or a nocturne from a sonata. Still with me? Great! I'm pretty sure you know who Beethoven is, or Mozart, or Bach. You may also know they are considered musical geniuses, but why? Because of... Or... Or... Well, yeah, but what's so special about it? The answer is too long, but for now it's enough to say that every great work no matter if it's music, a building, a painting, or any artistic expression, has something. Form. The composer did not sit down and began to write hoping that something beautiful would come out. Or maybe he did. That's the idea, right? Just start writing something. Possibly. But the composer not only did that, because we can see, in the work of the composer, that he had a plan, a structure in mind, a musical form. Of course, depending on the musical period, the musical form is going to be clear or not. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll stick to clean, recognizable forms and start adding more difficult as you progress in your understanding of form. Which reminds me, what is form? If you just search for a definition, you are going to find some confusing things, so here's a little definition that will help you. That which separates what is from what is not. Are you with me? Here's an example. Just by looking these figures, you can tell the difference from one another. Because you know their forms, and you also know the name given to those forms. Now look. Just a glance is enough to recognize a person from Saria. Uh, that's my cat. <laughs> now, you use the form every day to recognize objects and people or anything in the physical world. 
But what about music? Music has no physical body. It's just a complex mix of sounds interpreted by the brain. And you know it has form, consciously or not, because you perceive an order. It's not just... <laughs> that had no order. But how about this? Pleasant, right? Let's find out why. See this? You know what it is. It's a chair. Now let's see what makes a chair. Well, from my point of view, the Jedi are... Uh, <clears throat> sorry. From my point of view, I see three parts. The legs, the seat, and the chair back. <laughs> I don't know about you, but a good chair has to have those three. Otherwise, it would be a standard bench. You can actually look at everyday objects and try to break down their components. Then, most likely, everything is in its right place. No more, no less. Just what is needed. That happens in music too. You can see that what separates what is from what is not. Let me show you an example. I can tell there is an end here and then a start of something new in the very same musical piece. This indication here, which is a change in tempo, which means change of speed, helps you the duck. This is another part of the form. The drawing, what is also called a musical text, can give you the form too, in most cases. Because sometimes the musical form is so complex that it will require a more advanced analysis. If this is... A chair. Then this is... A chair. Uh, sorry to compare the work of you guys with chairs, <laughs> but the answer is yes. One of the most notable characteristics of a piece is its form. Even if you don't notice it per se, the composer broke their heads in order to bring new ideas to the concept of form, some of them even breaking the rules of the established music theory of their times. But that's how art evolves. Those rules can be broken. But you better have a very good reasoning to do it. Back to form. Form can also be this. As you can see, this is a simple pattern of figures. You can easily guess what figure is coming next just by analyzing the pattern. This can happen in music too. Not strictly an exact repetitive sequence. I'm talking about this. As you can see, or rather, as you can hear, in this particular piece, a phrase is happening twice. You may wonder, what is a phrase? To understand what a phrase is, we need to know what a melody is. Do you know Legend of Zelda? Or at least you know the overworld music theme? I'm going to use that theme to explain the concepts of melody, phrase, and motif. Since it's very popular and if you don't know it, it's okay. I'm using it because it's easy to hear and understand. You'll see what I mean. A melody, or theme, is a linear succession of musical tones that the listener perceives as a single entity. This is part of the Zelda Overworld theme, the one from 1986 that almost everybody knows. Phrase is a unit of musical meter that has a complete musical sense of its own and it is formed by motifs. thieves. 
A motif is the smallest structural unit possessing thematic identity. In other words, is the smallest fragment of a phrase that you can recognize as part of a theme or melody. If you need another example, here is another one. So, back to Bach. The structure Bach used in this prelude is the presentation of a phrase and immediately the repetition of it. So, essentially, the melody is made out of two phrases moving around with different notes. So far, so good? Good. Some musical forms are fixed and cannot be altered because if you do, then they would stop being that form. For example, you can have a waltz if it is not measured in three beats, or a cheeseburger without cheese. The beauty of music is when its form is not strictly defined. Those forms are called free forms, but that's a topic for another video. As I mentioned before, music is very similar to literature than to any other art. You have the poet and the composer, the poem and the musical piece, the declamation of the poem and the declamation of the musical piece. Phrase and phrase, structure and structure. You can find a poem with a free structure as well as a free form music. You may think that I mentioned music needs form to coherently exist. Yes, I did say that, but I also mentioned breaking the rules with a good reasoning. Even the free forms can be separated into parts to analyze. As my former teacher used to say, from the general to the particular. Or in other words, to take a piece of music and see its parts, and each part's melody, and each melody's phrases, and each phrase's motifs. Basically, that's form, musically speaking. If you have any question or suggestion, you can leave it in the comments section below. I would really appreciate if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to continue making videos like this. I upload gaming and music content, and both of them sometimes, yeah. So feel free to check out. And by the way, thank you so much for watching. Take care, rogues, and see you in the next video.